I'm gonna talk about my favorite brushes of all time. I like them so much that I buy them by the case. I'll give you three reasons as to why that is right now. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with the first of several videos I'll be making about brushes. Many of you have been asking me about what brushes I use in my own work, uh, so I thought it would be a good entry point to talk about uh, my top all-rounder, and uh, I'll be going over some specifics of this brush and then give you my three reasons as to why it's my favorite. One, two, three, three. Two things before we get started. Number one, I have no affiliation with the company that produces these brushes, although I am a fan. The other thing is, these are the brushes that I like for the type of work that I do. Uh, a lot of painters use all kinds of different brushes and techniques, so to each his own. I'm not trying to take a soupy dump in your Cheerios, so just take that for what you will. This is just one humble goose mirror to the masses. So this is it. This is a two and a half inch Cortez from the Corona Company out of sunny Tampa, Florida. And if you buy one from a Benjamin Moore retailer, which is where I purchase them, uh, you'll get it to look like this. It comes in its cover, which is Velcroed. Then you wanna save that for later, that's important. Set that off to the side. And this is what the brush looks like brand new. A couple things about this brush right out the gate. Uh, it's two and a half inches, which means it's two and a half inches wide. It also comes, we use the two inch variety as well. You can kind of see for a comparison. And I also have uh, a lot of times for like little detail work, I have an inch and a half as well. I like this version the most uh, for the kind of stuff that I do. And uh, it is a blend of nylon and polyester bristles. Kind of gives you the best of both worlds with uh, some stiff bristles mixed in with some soft bristles. So um, they're very soft at the toe, which is the kind of the tip of the brush here. Uh, which gives you some, it, it just lays down the product really nicely, but we'll get to that a little bit later. A uh, couple other things about this brush. It has a hand chiseled toe up at the, the top here. So uh, that is super important later for just the shape of the top of these bristles. The other big thing that people might be raising an eyebrow at is that this is a sashed or angled brush, which means it has this angle here at the top. The squared off version of this brush is called the Monterey, and that's what that looks like. So this is two and a half inches that's squared off. And there's lots of reasons the guys like these too. It's between 15 and $25. Uh, I, again, I buy them by the case. And also where you can purchase them are Benjamin Moore retailers. And then you can occasionally find them uh, on Amazon as well. Onward to the three reasons why I like this brush. Starting in at number one is versatility. Uh, this brush can be used for both interior and exterior paints, uh, which is super nice. It's got enough precision and softness of the bristles to lay down trim paints, uh, but it's also got enough kind of structure to it to lay down some of the thicker exterior paints uh, that we run into. You can also use it with oil and latex-based paints, which is great. Um, it also does really well with the hybrids. So for a long time, we were using this brush for ceilings, walls, and trim. Uh, it does particularly well with a lot of the hybrid paints like uh, Advance and Emerald Urethane. Not quite as good as a new brush that I like, which I will talk about in the next video, which I will link to at the end of this one. Um, however, uh, this brush we used exclusively for a really long time. If you're only gonna stock one brush in your quiver o brushes, this might be a solid candidate. Numero dos is durability. These brushes are really well made. The bristle density is really nice. You can tell there's a lot in there. Um, and these bristles tend to not fall out, which if you've used cheaper brushes, a lot of times as you're laying down the product, bristles can fall out and start to kind of like ruin your finish, which is really annoying. If you take care of these brushes and wash them out properly per like whatever product that you're using, uh, they will hold up uh, uh, really nicely over time. Coming in at number three is, I'm gonna call it handling, which is basically how this brush feels in your hand, but also how quickly it can cut in and do all the things that you need a brush to do. The shape of this handle is really nice comparative to a lot of the other brushes have some weird cuts, at least to me. Also the uh, chiseled toe of the bristles is really conducive to cutting incredibly clean lines. Uh, a lot of that comes down to how skilled you are with a brush. Part of that accuracy too is the sash, like this angle 
Um, and that's why I like it, just because I can get into tighter spots uh, than I can if I use the squared off brush. Nothing against squared off brushes. I know a lot of, um, lack of a better term, old timers and guys that were trained under old timers like squared off brushes, and these have a lot of good uses, which I will cover in another video. All that being said, if you're looking for one brush to rule them all and accomplish the majority of your painting needs, you can't go wrong with a Corona Cortez. Until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.